I have learned that people respond to my story with their stories. They thank me in a way that I don't fully understand, but they thank me for my courage in sharing my story, which I don't feel took any courage. But I appreciate that they that what they're saying is this must have been difficult, and what I hear in that is it would be difficult for me. And then they start to share their story, and that's very powerful, even in a little bit. And maybe it encourages them to think about that. Uh, the other thing is that stories, the concept of narrative fixing everything is true in almost every field right now, in politics and organizing and so forth. But, but one of the things that stories do is that they, our analysis tends to break things down into components that we look at. So, you know, the double blind study will answer a particularly narrow kind of question, and maybe it can be reintegrated. But we live integrated lives. Lives that don't always make sense the way we might like them to, but they, our lives are rich and contextual and incompatible and confusing and broken. And if, we're care, if we care about treating and interacting with real people, we have to have a real sense of what real people are like. And uh, so, um, so introducing stories to ethics can introduce some of the complexity that it's just not cut and dried. I often feel, and as I've gotten older, I often feel that um, somebody will say something to me and this is part of my training over the years now, and I'm thinking, but why are they saying this to me? What is it, where did this opinion come from? Where did they get the information? What's driving the animus uh, or the passion or whatever? And if I can get behind to that story, I am likely to be much more sympathetic. Even if I don't agree with what they're saying, I'm much more sympathetic. I understand how uh, this was formed in you. And the other thing is that I think, having been a teacher and a preacher and a political person and so forth, that stories, people remember stories. We are a species that remembers and we repeat stories. And when a story is a puzzling story, we repeat it all the more. So this is one reason why uh, my favorite parable is the parable of the workers in the vineyard where they are all in the market and the master goes out and hires some early and then some in the middle of the day and some at the end of the day. And the people in the market who get hired are getting more and more depressed as they see people going off to get work and they're going to be stuck making nothing. Finally, they all go out to the field and then the, the master pays them all the same amount. And the people who've been working all day, they were the ones who suddenly feel they've been ripped off. And the reason I love this story is that when you present it to most people, they line up with those who feel ripped off. But when you probe that story for a little while, it's more deeply about how do people respond to generosity. In other words, if, if, if you witness someone else being generous to someone else, are you pleased for the person who received the generosity or frustrated that you weren't the recipient of that generosity. And that reveals an inner human dynamic that gets us to learn something about ourselves. And I think that that's an example of a story that cannot be calculated away or st structured through some game theory mechanism. It's a story that reveals the interesting ambivalence of human beings towards what, when good things happen to other people. So that's so. In that sense, uh, I I don't believe story, stories necessarily solve all problems, but they're one technique for backing people off their certainty. I guess that's what I would say, and that's often one of the most important tasks. <laughs>